All right. Hello, my name's Sam and this is my little art room in the northwest of England and this is my first ever YouTube video so please bear with me because it's a little nerve-wracking even though I make videos on TikTok this feels so different um, but I'm looking forward to it because I really love YouTube and I love the pace of YouTube where I feel people get more room to breathe so hopefully the nervousness will calm down and I will also breathe um, but for now, um, there is a, an edge of stress uh, to this video, um, but here we are in this little room and you are always welcome to join me in the little art room where I hope I can share some things about being an artist, I can maybe give helpful tips and advice, I can show my process. I don't have a big plan of where this is going to go, um, I don't like to plan too much because I'm a chronic overthinker um, and I just need to start things a lot of the time otherwise they will never happen. So here I am starting and yesterday I took loads of clips of me talking and I think I felt the need to like say so much and explain so much about myself. But you know what? I don't think I need to do that. I think I need to take it a step at a time and not bore everyone's tears. So what I'm going to do today is just focus on telling you about a zine that I made at the end of last year, which is called Pajamas. <laughs> and this is it. And it was drawn entirely in 6B pencil, a pencil I've got right here. I kind of could pencil this actually. Um, basically, this scene uh, was quite different to anything I've done before. Um, this year I'm really trying to challenge myself to make lots of different things, to allow things to be eclectic and different because my work's kind of always been like that. I love to explore lots of different things and I'm on a path where I'd love to get to like, um, well I love narrative work and I'd love to get to things like comics, graphic novels, and for them to be kind of lo slightly longer form, not necessarily really long, um, because I found that I absolutely love short short media as well. Um, but yeah, I'm kind of trying to build up my confidence, build up my skill, because there's a heck of a lot of skill that has to go into comic making and things like that. And I'm just still trying to learn a lot. Um, I learned art pretty much from scratch a few years ago, and I really could hardly draw anything. So. I'm very much um, constantly working on my skill and trying to work towards um, what I'd love to make. So these are all the little stepping stones that I'm trying to take. Um, and yeah, let me tell you some more about this. So whenever I start a project or a drawing, I usually start off with a pretty simplistic idea. Um, that's just how I like to work. So I even have a little jar that sometimes helps me where, I mean, it's a jar with paper in it, you kind of get the idea. But um, I have loads of little prompts in here. What's this one gonna be? Oh, that is so funny actually. I mean, it's not that weird because I'm like, what a coincidence, but um, actually it's probably because it's the last one I put away after making this scene. But it is the pajamas one. Will that focus? How does technology work? Does anybody know? Um, I have loads of prompts in here. Some are really simplistic, some are a bit more complicated. Um, and I usually will just use these as a springboard for ideas. Um, to be honest, if I go into things like thinking I have to make something for a specific meaning, often I get overwhelmed or like quite weighed down by that pressure. Um, I believe that we all have things mulling away in our brains, mulching away. And, um, when you make something, it will come to the surface anyway. It will show itself. So that's what I always allow to happen usually. That's not to say I can't sometimes sit down and be like, I need to make something about this this topic. But if it's too specific, if it's too like, I don't know, if I'm forcing it towards that issue, um, it's quite difficult. It just doesn't usually work. Um, uh, so as per usual, there wasn't really like a big thought process behind this. It wasn't like, oh, I know exactly what I wanna do here. Um, but I knew I felt like I wanted to make something quiet. I wanted it to be really just about the visuals. And in the past, 
like generally I love stuff that involves words um, and that is quite wordy and narrative but with this I just wasn't feeling that um, I wanted it to be quite um, just of a certain mood um, I apologize if it's really dark um, by the way because it's very gray outside yesterday when I rambled on um, it was a lovely sunny day but I just feel that in the end that um, it was too much rambling on um, so you've got uh, a bit of a gloomier shot today um, but yeah let me show you some of the processes of the zine uh, and how I went about it and if you'd like to make something like this please let me know if you need any help or yeah I'd love to hear about it so first thing was first I did some just some sketchbooking on foxes I was trying to figure out you know how would I like to draw a fox um, I was immediately drawn to using pencil actually and I also thought about how I'd drawn animals in the past um, I often do this thing where I do the fur and I leave a bit of a gap for the eye because when I draw people I usually just draw dots with maybe like a line over but that can be quite hard with animals because it gets lost um, so I liked this kind of image and I went from there really um, you can see my plan for the zine here ignore the numbers because the layout actually changed um, but you can see really just how basic the plan was um, I really wanted to be spontaneous with my mark making and so literally this was all I based the drawings off you can see the real ones <laughs> hiding there uh, but yeah there was no like underdrawing I didn't draw over anything or plan it I'm not saying this to be like wow look at me um, <laughs> I'm more just saying that it was a deliberate choice to let the marks be really spontaneous because I really love that the more I can draw without too much planning the more I enjoy it usually um, so this is really how simple it was but you might think to yourself but hang on how could I like draw something like this just straight away like isn't the layout going to get really confusing like how am I going to draw that so here's what ne happened next so this piece of paper was actually integral to making the zine um, and it's literally just um, I had two of these oh there it, there it is I lost one of these yesterday um, I had two of these with slightly different layouts because some of the layouts were a little bit more complicated um, but I essentially drew every possible uh, like collection of boxes that I had planned out on these two sheets so that I could have them under my drawings while I was drawing and keep them within the equal layouts so I had to do quite a lot of maths uh, which is very much not my strong suit um, even just something like this is like hard for me um, so I had to do all this but once I'd done it it was like the best supporter for my zine it just made it so much easier to make so um, if I just put those up a minute you might see like what I mean so like for example this was the first page and you can kind of see how like I was using those boxes and the outline for that um, and it allowed me to like do these quite messy edges which to be honest sometimes looked a little bit too messy um, but I generally allowed it um, and you know you can see how a lot of these lines are I hope look very spontaneous um, I really enjoyed the mark making in this scene um, I enjoyed it so much um, and I really like the fox actually uh, it was hard to keep the fox consistent as you'll see but I was trying not to be a total perfectionist and I did continue on even when I felt it wasn't totally consistent um, so this was the next sequence um, you can see like I'm able to switch up the layout without you know all from that one page that I designed without it being really complex to do um, this was actually quite a challenging section because 
I did wanted to do the shower, but I was like, how do I, how do I do the water? Because I've been doing this really strong mark making, but how do I convey that the water is actually drifting over him? Because otherwise it won't look right. So in the end, I kind of like forced, I really heavily drew um, the shower water over the existing marks to try and like convey that. I think it worked in the context of this scene where you've kind of got used to the way that I'm drawing the marks, but I don't think it would work in something that, you know, you were going for a more realistic thing. Like, yeah, I don't think believably this is, um, this is shower water. <laughs> it's very kind of cartoony in a way. Um, I really liked the space in this page. Um, I think that worked. This is probably my favorite page. It's just so, cozy and I really love the brushing of the of the hair. Um, this was an oddly challenging page because sometimes the most basic images are actually the hardest because you're kind of thinking well what details am I going to put in? How is this going to be interesting? Like it was quite hard. Um, this is modelled off my actual uh, teddy bear rabbit just to put that in there um and this was the final page this was another really challenging one um because i knew, like i'd planned out i wanted two images where there was a very slight shift in shift in mood um but i wanted them to look similar but also to obviously show that change and for it to be clear but it was really hard um and again drawing the fox consistently was a real challenge um and that's partly why i'm doing this you know because this is the kind of challenge you'll come up against every single page in a comic um like this fox and this fox you know don't necessarily look the same um really if we're being honest but you know for me it's not about being perfect it's about learning and uh hoping to do better next time. I actually really loved this character and I actually potentially would like to revisit it with say a different storyline that would be really interesting. Um, yeah so that's on the actual drawing process and let me talk about something else now. <laughs> so I'm just showing you through the printed version and um, yeah this wasn't too difficult to prepare for print because the layout was already as I wanted it in the printed booklet so you know sometimes I'm having to combine words you know images for the first time in in the digital realm rather than in real life but um, <laughs> for this it was already as I wanted it so uh, I just had to do some light editing on the drawings to get that more defined quality for print. Uh, again next time you know, if it if it'd be interesting, I'll try and show some of the actual process on the computer. Uh, but for now, I thought, you know, at least I can show the prints, and uh, yeah. So I'm guessing the shot now looks a lot lighter uh, than it just did. Uh, it's because we're now on the next day. Uh, some of the shots I took yesterday are just totally unusable really because they just got even darker than we were already at um, because maybe filming a YouTube video just before we then had a torrential rainstorm was maybe not the best idea um, but you know I'm starting this in January though it is actually February today it's the first February today um, so what do you expect uh, it's gonna be pretty bad weather sometimes um, so I'm already learning things from this I'm learning that I need to make sure there's enough light um, I also need to make sure I'm in focus because I've noticed that in some of the earlier shots I do apologize I'm not in focus properly. I think partly it's because it was so dark so the autofocus was struggling to keep me in focus. Um, so yeah we're learning, we're keeping going. Uh, I don't want to redo everything again because um, if I keep doing that it's, it's never going to see the light of day. So I'm persevering and yeah, I do apologise, it's a bit rough around the edges, but, you know, I kind of think that 
everyone's first YouTube video should be a bit like that. It's almost like just how it should be. Um, so, you know, you're gonna have to hold out for incredible videos that I'm gonna make, <laughs> if ever. Um, but for now, this is what we've got. Um, also next time it'll probably be more of like a vlog. I don't know, I'm gonna try lots of different things, but it may be more like a vlog uh, format. Like there'll be more variety of things, more variety of shots, more like of me actually in the process of making something. So uh, I apologize that this one is kind of me talking at you and just showing stuff, which I don't think is quite as engaging, but you know, um, I just kind of thought it seemed a shame not to talk through the pajama sign design uh zine because um it just felt you know i'd only just done it and it still felt fresh in my mind um and yeah we're gonna see what happens i'd quite like to make lots of different kinds of videos and just experiment with stuff um but yeah uh what else was i gonna say so yeah so this scene uh by the time you watch this will be available in my shop um for me right now i'm it's going to be tomorrow i'm putting it in the shop um but it'll be on there by the time this um sees uh youtube um but uh you know i'm it's weird i've been actually quite nervous about this weirdly and um you know when i was starting out i was really nervous about anything i ever uh showed anyone uh but over the past couple of years i've been a lot more I don't know I've just kind of thrown stuff out into the world and been like have at it um <laughs> you know um and uh but with this I'm I think I'm nervous because it, it has no narrative which I think has sometimes been more of my strength um even though I'm not the best at like talking um I find that in comics and when I'm writing in something like a book I can find the words more easily um, and I guess for this I ended up adding no words whatsoever apart from uh, those you know little bits in the comic uh, on the first page but I think it's because partly I wanted to I didn't want to set the I didn't want to set any kind of meaning in stone like ultimately you know this is a really short scene about a character who you know in my mind is very weighed down by um the world and feeling very helpless and lost and you know that combination of big things and small things that are just uh getting them down and in the zine they you know get home take a shower get in their pajamas um put on you know a good tv show and get in bed which is basically my nightly routine um <laughs> but you know on that last page uh where you have the fox sort of sitting quite still and then that very subtle change to um to like hugging the teddy bear um, I didn't want to write some kind of cheesy line about everything's great now because that wasn't the point of it. Um, I think it really is just for me about someone finding a small shift in their state of mind to the point where they can face the next day and, and that's kind of enough in that moment. Um, and they're kind of more going all right okay i can continue um it's not about things being fixed by a shower um you know and i didn't want it to feel like that so that is why i left it without words without you know um turning it into that but you know i've been nervous because um i guess it feels like nerve-wracking to you know put my faith in purely my drawing ability to convey certain emotions um or certain feeling and for it to impact people any in any way and the reality is it isn't going to impact a lot of people um it's gonna not it's not gonna leave a lasting impression on a lot of people 
but if it does on some people then it's a, it's a success in my mind um but yeah i have been a bit nervous because you know i'm worried that maybe people will go like is that it is that all this is um but if they do that's okay um that's part of experimenting with different things um putting things out there and you know seeing what happens so yeah and don't get me wrong there's a lot worse things to worry about uh than if <laughs> your zine's gonna do all right i'm really grateful if you've watched this um i appreciate it is a bit rough around the edges and it's also just um you know there's not much going on um but you know um i'd still just want to get this started really um because that's i think part of the hardest part of this um and i'm kind of comforting myself in the knowledge that like thousands of people will not watch this um if 10 people watch this i'll be really pleased and i appreciate all 10 of you <laughs> um but yeah um please you know leave a comment or you know contact me another way uh for you you know i'm always interested in your thoughts your advice your criticism your questions um whatever it may be so thank you so much for um joining me in the little art room and probably next i'll be talking about things like my iceland zine um as well as just other stuff that's going on i hope it'll be a little bit more fleshed out with other videos and you know it won't all be you know me just in this one room although i do spend a lot of my life <laughs> in this room <laughs> i'm not going to lie about that um but yeah um i'll try and take my camera around with me more and we'll see what happens it's just good to begin so that's what we're doing um so i guess till next time also um seeing as it's your first time seeing my art room i uh, thought i'd you know show some of it there's a lot to look at um <laughs> And of course you've got to see, um, they're really hard workers, they uh, just love the fish and chip game, and uh, yeah, I never go hungry in here, constant supply of fish and chips, and uh, some creations by my nan here, um, this little doll I have drawn like hundreds of times. Oh, is she getting focused? No. She's not having it. She is. Look at her little shoes. And more um, Swainian families over there. They're kind of like the bodyguards of the fish and chip shop. Uh, and I do have a narrowboat in my bedroom, but I'm going to leave that for another time.